For this episode, we'll stay in the West, specifically San Francisco. On October 12, 1863, Rear Admiral Andrei Alexandrovich Popov showed up at the Golden Gate with six Russian warships. While the majority of the news in the United States claimed the visit of the Russian warships in San Francisco and New York was a show of support by the Russians for the United States in the great game of international recognition, the Russians were there for different reasons. After the arrival, the Russians received a heroic welcome and made their influence felt throughout the city. The first permanent Eastern Orthodox house of worship appeared in the city during the visit. The officers of the fleet were dined and celebrated by the city officials and elite. When a fire broke out at one of the city's wharves, threatening the city, 200 Russian sailors came on land to assist the city population. To fight the inferno. On October 26, 1863, the city council passed a resolution thanking Popov and his officers for their help. They received gold medals as recognition of their service. In an unguarded moment, Popov even promised that if the CSS Alabama or another rebel raider would appear and make its way to San Francisco and attack the city. He would come to the aid of the U.S. defenders. While the city cheered the declaration by Popov, the Russian minister in Washington, Edward Sturkel, reminded Popov that he had to avoid any action that would question Russian neutrality in the ongoing war of the rebellion. While certain media today still claim Popov's statement deterred rebel raiders, that reader's view. Is based on hindsight and not history. Confederate raiders like the CSS Alabama never had any intention of attacking a U.S. port, making it past Fort Point with its 55 cannons and Fort Alcatraz with its eight cannons. In a battle between naval forces and coastal fortification, there was always a clear winner during the 1850s and 1860s. That were the land-based artillery emplacements. Not to mention that neither the CSS Alabama, which was rumored to threaten San Francisco, or the CSS Shenandoah, were likely to make an appearance, as they were far away from the area, anyways. At the same time, we also have to consider why the Russian government, and in particular the head of the Ministry of the Navy, Nikolai Karolovich Krabbe, despite Popov. As well as Rear Admiral Stefan Lesovsky to the United States, I'll include Krabbe's orders to Lesovsky, which also apply to Popov, at the end of this video. Popov had departed Europe in January 1862 for Hong Kong, the British trade port in China. He arrived three months later and explored the power situation in Asia with his small fleet. He also visited San Francisco that year. 
In April 1863, Popov received orders from Kravet to prepare for the eventuality of war. Because of the situation, a telegram announcing the commencement of war would go to Omsk, the end of the Russian telegraph line. From Omsk, a courier would take the order to Tietzin, the main port for Beijing on the coast. It would take over two weeks for news from Kremlin to reach Popov, potentially too late in case of war. Instead of hanging out around Shanghai or Hong Kong, Popov decided, on his own volition, to take his fleet to San Francisco. Even though Popov was not aware of Kravitz's order to Lisovsky, he had common sense to realize that the only safe port for his fleet in the Pacific was San Francisco. Thus the question arises. Why would the Russian fleet look for a safe port? The reason related to what historians have come to call the Eastern Question. As the Ottoman Empire, often incorrectly shorthanded into Turkey, declined, Russia and the Ottomans went to war almost every 20 years as Russia tried to push into the Mediterranean. The first 19th century conflict in this regard brought Greek independence. And the most recent iteration was the Crimean War. Furthermore, the second reason related to Poland, which had disappeared from the European maps in the late 1700s. The reorganization of Europe in 1815 had created what became known as Congress Poland, governed by the Russian Tsar. The Poles had resisted Russian rule in 1830, and again tried in 1861. The Russians were able to maintain order, despite over 100 demonstrations around Poland and the death of 200 Poles in Warsaw in April 1861 during protests. In January 1863, the situation exploded again, and for the next year and a half, Russian forces fought to suppress the Polish rebellion. European sympathies in London and Paris were with the Poles, and there were genuine but unfounded fears that France or Great Britain might get involved and Europe might experience a repetition of the Crimean War. At least the Russian leadership worried enough about this eventuality to dispatch his fleet to North America, out of harm's way and in a position to use them against their enemies i.e. Britain or France. Neither London or Paris had any intentions of repeating the Crimean War, but it were these European fears that brought the Russian fleet to New York and San Francisco. This was not a sympathy visit. Let's be clear about this. This was not a visit out of sympathy for the United States. This was part of the European chess game of power politics. It is interesting to consider how many historians of the War of Rebellion refuse to acknowledge the importance of the far west of the United States, but in San Francisco, the War of the Rebellion in the West, far west, and European power politics met with the Russians sailing into San Francisco Bay. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you like the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.